Hey, there you are. When are you gonna finish those crash? Oh, Crash. Whatever happened to you? You know it doesn't hurt, right? I know! Just leave me alone! Do you remember what I said you had to do? Yeah, play all the Crash games, which has been awful, by the way. Yeah, play all the Crash games. But you also had to finish them all before Labor Day. Remember that little tidbit? Look, Bill Murray, I, I don't care. I've gotten used to being stuck in this time loop. Dude, I'm not Bill. You know what? Whatever. Look, kid, this is about more than just being stuck in a never-ending time loop of the same day. This is about the fate of humanity. Bill Murray say what now? I'm not Bill freaking Murray. Just the f game. I'll f your this isn't gonna end well. If you're wondering why my upload schedule has been so out of whack lately, it's because of this. This abomination has ruined my life! I didn't know. I didn't know that when I pledged to myself that I would review every single Crash game, that this was at the end of the road. If I had known, I would have just played the original trilogy like every other sane person out there. But no! No! I had to have my cake and eat it too! And I don't even like cake! Crash Mind Over Mutants is a direct sequel to Crash of the Titans, and the last console Crash game to be released until the Insane Trilogy. The game begins where Crash of the Titans left off, on Wampa Island with Crash, Coco, and Crunch trying to make a TV from the parts of the Duminator from the last game. Oh, what's that? You want to know why the game looks like a crappy puppet show? Well, why would I know? I only played the entire freaking game! So this is the first terrible, awful thing about Crash Mind Over Mutant. Every single cutscene is presented in a different art style. Yep, you heard that right. Every single cutscene. Oh, that's super artistic and great. Shut up! Shut up! It's stupid, it's disorienting, and you don't know what half the characters look like because they look completely different in every cutscene. It's bad! Don't do this! And that's Crash Bandicoot Mind Over Mutant. Wait, wait, wait. You didn't you didn't talk about the game at all. Oh, and just in case you were worried that your screen was broken, it's not. This is actually how the game looks. Really freaking bad. This is the Wii version I'm playing because I didn't want to pay 35 bucks for the 360 version. I'm sad I spent any money on it. All right, the controls. Remember how in Super Mario Galaxy, they added very simple, minimalistic motion controls that actually improved the game and made it more fun? Well, Mind Over Mutant does the exact same thing. Except it's not fun and the controls suck. There is also a new mechanic introduced where Crash has to dig underground and it's used like three times. Which is good because it controls so bad! I don't think you understand. Imagine playing the game but instead of a controller, it's a weak old cupcake. For whatever reason, the developers decided they needed to redesign every single character and enemy in the game again. You know. The same thing they did in the previous game. Except now, they ruined it all by trying to make everything look more realistic. And it just looks bad. Okay, so I've been beating on the game pretty hard so far. So, let's just try to play the game with a clear mindset from now on, okay? Just, just give me one second. Just one second. The story of the game is that Dr. Cortex teams up with his old partner in crime from the original game, Dr. N. Brio. My name sounds like Fetus. Yes. 
Yes, it does. And together, they make these futuristic headsets that turns everyone into a mutant. Way to go, guys. A-plus story right there. Really gonna win an Oscar with that one! So, Crunch and Coco turn into mutants, while Crash and Aku Aku don't. Because... And with that, they are off on their adventure. So the first thing I noticed about the game is that it plays exactly like Wrath of the Titans. Same moves, same controls and animations, everything. But they did improve on a lot of problems I had with the first game. Like now, Crash has a dodge ability to make fighting mutants easier. The mutants can jump now, and you can keep up to two mutants stored for later use. That's actually pretty nice. Too nice. <laughs> The second thing I noticed is how the game is open world now. That's kind of cool, I guess? Except no! No it isn't, because it's actually the worst thing about this game! Because apparently in the world of Mind Over Mutants, open world means three main areas that are stapled together like some kind of crappy Frankenstein's monster. The level design is a mess too. They actually put in a lot of effort to actually design the world this time around instead of just having a huge empty wasteland but this time instead now there is a huge open world full of crappy platforming and you'll become really familiar with these areas because this game pads out playtime by making you backtrack 90 percent of the game that's not an exaggeration the entire game is just spending hours platforming through one of the three areas, and once you get to the end, having to go back the exact same way you came, doing the exact same puzzles, fighting the exact same enemies, and climbing the same stupid walls over and over again! And also- Oh, d did I just level up? Are they adding RPG elements to my Crash game? Why? Did they just see Crash with his bazooka in the third game and one dude was like, Hey, look, Crash has an RPG. What? No, that's a bazooka, but that's a good idea. RPG Crash, Dragon's Crash, Crash Souls, Final Crash to see! And now we have a boss fight with Mutant Coco, and this is actually pretty fun. It's not bad, that's all I can say about it. After you beat Coco, you have to go to this snow area and do something I don't remember and I don't care. In this area is where you find this thing, the newest mutant to the Crash franchise. What's that? You think it looks like a fetus with arms and legs? Because that's exactly what it is. After we get this guy, guess what? We have to go all the way back the same way we came, and oh noes, we need a mutant who can spin. So, we have to travel two hours away and get it! And then, surprise! We have to go all the way back with our Sonic the Hedgehog mutant, and well, what do you know? We gotta go back through the snow area again. Come back, go to the forest area, come back. Go through the desert area again, come back. Beat the crap out of Crunch, come back. Go through some caves again, and finally we get some fast traveling for one last romp through the same three areas! Again! You think that's it? No! I started this, and I'm gonna end it. Bring it on! You did this to me! Now you're gonna get it! You're getting what's coming to-
Hey guys, thank you so much for watching that video. If you like what we saw here, please consider subscribing to The Toka Show. Uh, I post videos every Tuesday and Saturday. Also, uh, you need to follow my Twitter because I do awesome stuff there. Um, yeah, don't forget to, wait, there's, you didn't leave? Wait, I, you gotta get me out of the dirt. Ferris! Ferris, where are you going? Ferris!